Oh, we hit it! Our attack rating isn't going up anymore. 812,000 attack rating? All right, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what that just was. A fantastic member of our YouTube community made me aware of this weird bug that they encountered when they were messing around on the PTR single player on the Assassin. So let me very quickly explain what we were doing there. Every time that we used Tiger Strike, Tiger Strike will add plus 75% attack rating onto your base value. So the idea is that you get three charges, and then back in the old days, if you used a regular attack or a finisher, you would dispel all three charges, and then you'd have to start back over at base zero. They've changed how the game works. So instead of using all three of your charges on a finisher or on a base attack, you will only use the number of charges that you attack for. So if you use something like, uh, you know, Dragon Talon with three attacks, you use up all three charges. Now, when you use a finisher with combo points, you will always hit 100% of the time. With a base attack, you won't always hit, but the benefit of the base attack is it only uses a single charge. So much more similar to something like uh, Dragon Tail, which will only use a single charge, or something like Dragon Claw, which will use two charges, your base attack will only use one charge. Now, if you were watching, every time we expelled a charge of Tiger Strike and bumped back down to two charges, we were able to get a new charge of Tiger Strike. And while it wasn't increasing our damage because the number of charges determines how much enhanced damage on the skill that you get, it looks like it was adding the attack rating every single time. So to test out whether or not that was really the case, we were using a character who at first was using full angelics, but our weapon and our armor broke. But basically it's just using the amulet and then two rings. So that's giving us a flat 1440 attack rating in addition to 10 decks. So our tiger strike attack rating was about 5,500. So a 78% chance to hit the target. Our base attack rating was only 3,400. And that's about a 70% chance to hit. So, you know, missing three out of 10, roughly 1.5 out of five, et cetera, et cetera. You understand fraction. You would see that we weren't hitting 100% of the time. And that's because even with a ridiculous amount of attack rating, our character level compared to the zombies character level in hell is slightly lower. So we could never really exceed, I think it was 92% chance to hit. But as we added more and more attack rating, we were hitting more consistently. So this wasn't just the character screen showing a value that wasn't true. This was having in-game effects. Now, what do you do with near infinite attack rating on a character, considering the fact that your finisher moves hit 100% of the time. Well, there is one benefit, and I wanna to try to highlight that, and I'm gonna move over to the D2 planner just so you can see the numbers in real time, because it'll be a lot easier than me generating a character with a bunch of different gear. So let's hop over to D2 planner, and I'll show you what I mean. So I've taken the character and I've loaded up them with all of these stats that we have. We do have the PTR planner currently live. So that's all of the changes to the skills that we've seen in patch 2.4. And we've loaded up that zombie as the target that we're trying to hit. Now, originally on the full angelic set, again, the big benefit is that we're having a massive amount of flat attack rating and then a little bit of additional decks and a little bit of a flat attack rating from the weapon itself. And you'll see that our base chance to hit with this weapon is something like 70%. Uh, and then just two things to keep in mind, uh, you can never get higher than a 95% chance to hit a target, regardless of your level or attack rating, and you can never have lower than a 5% chance to hit a target, again, regardless of your level or attack rating. You always have a chance to hit the Ubers, even with a level one character. Now I wanna use two different weapons to show you just how different having certain stats on your gear will affect your attack rating. So I made the rune word Venom, and the reason why Venom is so important because it has a value that says ignore target defense. What that means is that you basically get the full 100% value of your attack rating because your target is calculated as having zero defense. Now the only difference is uh, between your character level and the monster's character level. So if I equip that instead of a Katar, you'll see that our chance to hit bumps up to a 94 
per cent. Uh, that's actually pretty nuts. So I wasn't even expecting it to go that high. But this is to give you an idea of just how strong something like just ignore target defense on any non boss monster is when you're trying to calculate chance to hit. Now, let's say you were running around with something like a venom in your main hand and then a really powerful weapon in your off hand that you intend to use your tiger strike charges with but you want to be able to hit and you don't want to have to sacrifice that attack rating. So let's go look up just the biggest the biggest weapon that we can find that doesn't have something like minus target defense or anything like that. Just big big silly damage. Okay, we're going to use death because death is actually a really really good example. In the gameplay that was included, you'll notice that basically we just need to make sure that we hit while we get our Tiger Strike charges, and then the weapon on our swap could benefit from all that stacking attack rating without needing to have stats like ignore target defense or minus target defense or high values of attack rating, etc., etc. So what I'll, I'll go even further. I'll take off all of our attack rating gear, because remember, using something like ignore target defense means you don't need attack rating to hit your target, it's just the difference in level. And then we swap over to something like death, and let's make it ethereal, why not? Now you'll see, obviously, the difference in damage would be pretty catastrophic, right? So the difference in having, uh, like, you know, a Venom Claw on one side, even with three Tiger Strike charges up, is only going to be doing about 144 damage, but it's basically going to hit all the time. And then you swap over to something like death, which only has a 54% chance to hit, but is doing 1,800 to 3,700 damage because, again, you have those three charges of Tiger Strike. Now, what if I told you you could run around, basically have a prep weapon with a ton of survivability and prep, get your three attacks in very quickly, and then swap to something like Death on the offhand, not have any other attack rating on your build, and as long as you have a consistent source of monsters to hit, every fourth attack could be this massive damage dump. Because as you hit near infinite attack rating, you reach ignore target defense for any monster. What do I mean by that? Again, ignore target defense means that regardless of your target's defense value, you basically have infinite attack rating. Your attack rating is at the max cap that it can be to hit that target. When you swap and you build up hundreds of thousands of attack rating, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what stats are on your other weapon other than raw damage and additional effects. I think this is the only way that you can actually apply this very, very niche. I'm going to call it a bug. This is definitely not the intention of how being able to keep charges and keep doing power up attacks is supposed to work. Okay, so that's all well and good. But Mac, every finisher has a 100% chance to hit. Why would you ever go through all this time and effort of keeping these charges up if you could have a 100% chance to hit regardless? Well, let's look at the different finishers that you have. Dragon Talon, Dragon Tail, and Dragon Flight are all kicks. Now, what is the problem with a kick attack? Every kick attack does not benefit from ethereal status on the weapon, enhanced damage on the weapon, enhanced maximum damage on weapon, minimum and maximum damage on weapon, plus damage like grief, uh, percentage damage to demons and undead, which is ED off weapon, deadly strike, critical strike, claw mastery, barber, <laughs> the barbarian combat mastery. But every other facet of your weapon's damage typically is not converted in a kick. So then we look at the other finisher available to you, and that's Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw is fantastic, and since it's attacking with your weapons, it doesn't suffer from this problem. But Dragon Claw requires you to do a multi-attack with two claws equipped. This method allows you to load up a basically 100% chance to hit, or as if you had ignore target defense on your offhand weapon without needing it, and deliver 
the max chance to hit weapon damage on top of your Tiger Strike addition as well. So let me very quickly bump up Tiger Strike just to show you like what that damage difference would look like if you're not using a finisher versus using a finisher. Just in our previous example, where we're going to abuse the fact that we can load up charges on a primary weapon that has a huge amount of attack rating, minus target defense, ignore target defense, or minus uh, defense per hit, and this is a level 20 Tiger Strike, then we're gonna bump over to our offhand, which basically says almost no attack rating at all. Like, look at our attack rating. Our attack rating without bumping anything up is only 1200. Uh, typically this attack would only have a 60% chance to hit, but if you were to approach that 800 attack rate, you wouldn't even need to go that high. I think we were maxed out on attack rating around like 200 per uh, 200,000 attack rating, which took us a minute to get up to. Consider this, you're only hitting 60% of the time normally, this would be up near 95% chance to hit, and we're dumping 3,000 to 7,000 damage without any other gear on the build. Let's look at the other attacks. So we'll take out Dragon, uh, Dragon Talon, we'll take out Dragon Tail, and we'll take out uh, Dragon Flight, although you wouldn't really use that as a finisher, typically. Let's get rid of everything else. So, we bump up our Tiger Strike, right, to three charges. Dragon Talon is doing 900 damage. Obviously, we don't have any boots and any other gear, but if I'm showing you this damage compared to no gear, I gotta show you the rest of the damage compared to no gear. So this is a, a three charge Tiger Strike on our Dragon Talon on the same weapon, which is about 900 damage. Dragon Tail, which is doing about 900 to 1300 damage, including the fire damage. And then Dragon Flight, which is maxing out at 952 damage. Again, none of that's going to take the vast majority of stats from your weapon. You're going to need to have massive boots, and you're going to need to have a bunch of other things to help augment your damage, rather than just abusing a weapon that gives you a really good chance to hit to buff up your infinite attack rating, and then swap over to something like death. Now, the one thing that I really don't know how this will play into stuff is whether or not this has PvP implications. Obviously, PvP defense is a lot more important. Attack rating is a lot more important because a lot of those uh, a lot of those very strong stats don't work as well in PvP or just don't work at all. So maybe there's a way for a martial arts assassin to abuse something like this. I'm not an expert in that. So if you think that you have a good idea, either yes or no, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And again, thank you very much uh, for one of the amazing YouTube members from our community. I'm not gonna put them on blast because I didn't ask their consent to use their name, but I appreciate you. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. And I think this is something very, very cool. These are the kinds of things in Diablo 2 that I really like. These very weird, niche, abusable things that people can use to help kind of even out that progression, especially in the early game into mid game. And maybe this does have applications later on too. There's something to be said about the fact that the reason why something like a kicks in is typically abused is because you get a lot of attacks, now you're gonna have a 100% chance to hit, and you put Crushing Blow on it. But what if you could reliably have near 100% chance to hit on massive weapon damage when you're into that range where Crushing Blow really isn't getting you a lot more damage on the target than pure weapon damage would be getting? But again, let me know down in the comments below what you think. This is incredibly interesting, and I'm really excited to see if they keep it in, and if they do, what the community comes up with builds that are able to abuse this facet of it. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and thank you for watching.